You're tuned in to the only all sports talk network in the Middle East, IsraelSportsRadio.com. Back here on Lewis Live, our thanks again to Jim Williams from the Washington Examiner. On the line now, the author of Brotherhood of Warriors. He made an appearance on Larry Kane, in which six million people viewed the episode. He made an appearance on my show in the summer. And he is almost six million people viewed oh, your, that oh, episode. That's correct. Six million listeners. And he is now the new technical special forces advisor to the new movie Haywire, which has a great cast. We'll get to that to the moment. But first let's introduce back to the program Aaron Cohen. Aaron, how you doing out there? I'm good. How are you? We're doing great. Thank you so much for coming back. Like I mentioned to you off air, we had, we had great feedback, so it was great to have you on. And uh, before we get to the movie, uh, did you ever think uh, growing up as a teenager uh, in Beverly Hills that you would be a technical special uh, forces advisor to a, a movie made? No. In fact, the whole, the whole reason why I wound up in Israel was because I was so... Uh... I was I, 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 I so despised the whole Hollywood you know way of life and, and the attitude and the self importance and entitlement. Uh, that's what led me to Israel in the first place. Uh, so it's it's really ironic that you know almost 15 years after you know being in the IDF and uh, and almost 10 years after starting my business, uh, I've been asked to participate in a film which uh, was really the time of my life. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to watch a movie. Uh, you know, start from a script, which is where uh, uh, Steven Soderbergh and I started, and then, you know, to see it on the screen is it's kind of crazy. Now, it's interesting that you end up working on a movie because in the summer I asked you with all the things you saw with the military here in Israel if it was more like a movie in in real life, that that's then you kind of watched the movie and it wasn't the same, that what you experienced was more like a movie, and here you are working on a movie. So how do you transfer and transition the process to make it look as real as possible? Um, well, to, to, I mean, it's a good question. Uh, uh, it, it, it wasn't as hard as, as I thought it would be because, you know, I was a little worried, well, it's going to be a film, and, and, and you know, I, I really what this turned out to be was an opportunity for me to put uh, uh, my footprints on a movie and to make sure it looked real, and so... You know, I wanted to make sure that, that I took advantage of, of every opportunity that I had specifically on the shoot. And, you know, you're going to see a Duke Devon footprint all over this thing from, uh, you know, from reflective strips on, on weapons, uh, which we use when we're on undercover operations so that we don't accidentally shoot each other, you know, to, to specialized tactical vests, uh, uh, to just some of the entry techniques that you're going to see. Um, you know, Gina Carano uh, and Channing Tatum, uh, and myself performing, I actually have a, a small supporting role in the film. Uh, that was one of the things that was important to uh, Stephen. Uh, you know, he likes to throw no names who are actually the real thing, so that was kind of cool. Um, when it made it challenging because I was on the set conducting or coordinating a scene for him, trying to keep it real, and you have to jump in it and actually throw lines and act in it and right. shoot blanks. It's a little tougher than you would think. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. The IDF definitely helped with that. But to <laughs> keep it real and to make my thumbprint uh, on the film... Uh, it, it was easier than I thought because Stephen is is such an experienced director. He's such a professional in what he does that uh, he wasn't precious about 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 anything that came to the to the realness. So it was it was hey Aaron set this up and I'll build my shot around it. And he also gave me about six weeks to train the actors. Uh, so when we stepped foot on set, you know we, we we built such a strong foundation between training them. Uh, in between working with Len Dobbs, uh, he also wrote The Limey, which is a great movie. I don't know if you guys saw that, but uh, uh, he's one of my favorite writers. And by the time we, we, we got on set in Barcelona, you know, all the, all the basic building blocks had been put together, and they were so tight that uh, uh, everybody wanted it to be real. So it was really kind of easy. Now, how is it that you got hooked up with Steven to begin with, Steven Soderbergh, you coming from a different angle than the typical Hollywood supporting advisor. Yeah, it's a good question. I Stephen actually read my book. Believe it or not, he was researching. He decided, uh, uh, you know, over I guess over a year ago that he wanted to make a, a an action thriller or a special operations type of thriller, and he, I believe, started looking around the security community in Hollywood at different, you know, so-called experts who. Uh, you know, had bodyguard companies, and he had interviewed a bunch of different people, uh, a couple of CIA guys and a former British SAS guy, 
And he came upon my book, which was recommended to him by uh, by someone um, at his agency um, or someone at his management company. And he ended up reading my book, and, and, and it was just as simple as, like, literally getting a personal email from him uh, through my business website. And uh, he called me up, and he goes, hey, you know, he goes, I'm a big fan of your work. And I was a little taken by that, but I knew who he was, but I wasn't, I didn't really know what he meant. And I, and I said to him as a joke, I go, hey, man, I'm a big fan of your work. Thanks for taking me through the 90s with traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so we laughed, yeah. we laughed on the phone. And, and then he said to me, he goes, you know, I'm working on this film, and I was wondering if you were available to come over and if this is something that you'd be interested in doing. And, uh, you know, it's a movie. I love movies. And, I, you know, of course I'm going to meet with the guy and, and, and see if there's a way that I can add value, and especially if it's an action movie. And he said, well, can you come over today? Wow. Uh, we're working on the script, and we, we'd like to talk to you right away. And so I ended up driving to, uh, to Hollywood where he lives, and I ended up sitting in a room with him and Len Dobbs, the writer. It was supposed to be an interview, and it turned out to be an eight-hour conversation. Uh, uh-huh. which I guess was the day I started working on that movie. <laughs> yeah, I'll say eight hours. Yeah. Well, so they get uh, yeah. paid and compensated for that. Now, uh, you have experience. This movie is a star-filled cast. It has Gina Carano, like you mentioned, who's a star of the mixed martial arts world. It has, uh, of course, Michael Douglas. It uh, doesn't uh, have the biggest role in the film, but he's kind of the, one of the main characters because he kind of controls everything. And Antonio Banderas, you have experience not just because you grew up in the Hollywood life, but your security company protected and guarded stars like Brad Pitt. You you worked there with those stars. So what was it like to go from protecting these stars to then teach them how to do certain things in a movie the way you well, saw Protecting it? them on another scale. Another good question, man. You guys you guys got ready for this interview. <laughs> That's a good one because in the security business and the security brand that I've been trying to build for the last 10 years, uh, when you come in on a movie, you come in as a much bigger gorilla, especially when you're the director's guy. So it was really interesting for the first time in my career to have talent, A, not scared. Uh, usually when I, get, when I get introduced to celebrities because there's a really bad stalker uh, or because they have a continuing threat or they want to switch security companies and then we'll come in and do an assessment and then take over their security. Uh, so this was different. This was actually coming in at the top in their creative process in the middle of their career. So, you know, you're not just sitting you know, back in the security room, you know, with a, with a weapon on, watching monitors, you know, protecting their well-being, you're actually affecting their career. So you come in, and next thing you know, you've got Michael Douglas and, you know, Channing Tatum, who I, who I spent about two weeks training. Uh, he was in Dear John, and, you know, he's, he, he's starting to break pretty hard as an actor. Um, it's a lot different. You get a lot more respect. Uh, again, you're the director's guy, and these guys are leaning on you to make them look good. So it's actually they're kind of kissing your butt. So that was kind of cool. Uh, but at the pace. same time, you get to see that they, you know, the, 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 the similarity is that you don't work for them; you're working with them, and that's a nice, you know, adjustment in the uh, in the pressure and the atmosphere to actually be able to 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 not, you know, be working for them. And and, and so you know, it's 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 a different energy, you know, and it's uh, definitely pretty cool. Uh, definitely nice to know that. V- that you, everybody could be all in the same sphere and actually that the, the ties have changed a little bit in that sort of sense where they're looking up to you as opposed to looking down at you as a, yeah, an employee yeah. of and, theirs. And it's an opportunity to get to, to get to beat on some famous people too. Don't get me wrong, the training was really hard. Fair so enough. one of the things I said to Stephen was I said, hey, listen, you know, if these guys are going to make a, a really great movie off my hard work in the IDF, then, uh, you know, then, uh, then we're definitely going to work their backs a little bit and so me and my instructors, uh, you know, really put them through the paces. We wanted to make sure that, hey, you know, if you guys need to get a little more famous on our hard training, then we promise you're going to pay. <laughs> I hear that, and I'm sure that yeah. some of your uh, guys back here in, in, in the IDF, I'm sure, are very proud. Yeah. Now, to all the Dubdevanshi team who are listening, and, and, and you have a lot of Hebrew listeners, I'm going to say it in Hebrew. Ta'aminu li em shimu kamo shetarich ala avodot she ala imonin shen tiblu imenu. Fair enough. No doubt, no doubt. Now, what exactly is it that the technical special forces advisor does? Or in this case, what did you do for Haywire versus something something else, some uh, another sort of technical advisor to the director? 
Yeah, the, the, the specific uh, uh, technical advising that I did on the film or what I was contracted uh, specifically to do was, was three things. One, it was to contribute to the scripts um, at the time when they were when they were developing the story and they were trying to figure out what the plot line was going to be. They wasn't, uh, Stephen and Len weren't sure whether it was going to be a, um, a government operative or whether Gina... Uh, by the way, the premise of the film is... Uh, it is basically, it's, it's, it's a, a, a female special operations Blackwater style contractor, uh, uh, that, you know, goes, goes haywire after she's double crossed by a member of her team. And so she carries out black operations or, or operations where the U.S. government doesn't want to have a footprint, which uh. is, uh, what private military companies do. And so she gets double crossed. Uh, very classic sort of James Bondy, uh, type of film that he wanted to do. And so first thing I did was I came in and, and help them, you know, put together what could be actually true as far as the types of operations she would conduct, um, uh, how a private military company would operate, if that was the most interesting angle to go with. So it started with the script consulting just to make sure that they had uh, a storyline that was believable and that was based right. on real events. Uh, the next thing we did was train and prepare all the actors. Uh, Gina Carano didn't know how to hold a gun. She's an MMA star, and she's... You know, a total badass, uh, mano y mano, one on one, but, uh, we ended up, well, I ended up specifically training her on weapons and how to hold weapons and how to, how to move with the weapons in a tactical way and then how to train all the other actors in that scene, including myself, uh, which was nice because it was easy to be on set with them in the actual scene, uh, performing because, you know, obviously it's very second nature for me. Um, and then uh, all the gear and all the different tactical equipment that she is, is wearing in the film. Uh, you know, she's there's not a, there's a lot of fighting in the film, but there's a lot of special forces things that go on. Uh, doors being breached, explosives, flash bangs being thrown into rooms. There's an undercover scene where you'll see her uh, deploy a very trademark weapon of my unit, which is the uh, the micro Uzi, and that'll come out of a special bag uh, that she's carrying as she's walking up to a structure. Uh, you know, wearing jeans and a, and a, and a leather jacket. Um, so how to deploy weapons from custom cases, and, you know, that was about a six-week build-up or a six-week process. Uh, and then the third thing that we did was, was, or the third thing that I did was design all of that tactical action. We shot in two locations, uh, Barcelona and Dublin. And there's a massive shootout in Barcelona, and there's a massive roof uh, uh, chase in, in, in Dublin. And so Stephen wanted to know what that would look like and how to make it real so it didn't look gratuitous, meaning... If there's going to be a shootout, obviously the police are going to show up in a certain amount of time. Let's mm. show that. And so we did. So everything, you know, the moment we got to those countries, uh, you know, right away I started to chip away what would be real and what wasn't in terms of how it would look. And then uh, and then he wrapped the cameras and dropped them in around it. So uh, those are the three main functions. And now it's – and the fourth function is doing press, talking about it. <laughs> right, which is why you're on here with us. And uh, we hope you're having a good time yeah. so far. We certainly are on our end. Now, you mentioned the movie is a James Bond type of feel. Certainly, there's a lot of action and a lot of uh, drama like you would have in a James Bond film. But the star, the main attraction, what the whole movie is revolving around is a female. We're not used to seeing that too often. There are a couple of films that have female stars action-wise. But how unique is this, that this, the center main character is a female? And do you think that will continue, that you have other action films where the star is a woman? I, I do. I think it will continue, and I think the reason why is because Angelina Jolie is just she's just not that believable, and I think people know that. You know, when Angelina <laughs> runs, she you know she runs like that, like someone who's first trained as an actor, and you know she doesn't come from an action background. Uh, you know, specifically went after Gina Carano because you know he he wanted you know he felt that well, if Steven Seagal twenty years ago was given an opportunity to highlight his martial arts, right. then why not do it with this girl? Right. He ended up seeing her fighting in a cage, um, you know, about two years ago or a year and a half ago before he tapped her for the film and just thought it would be interesting to actually cast a non-actor but a combatant, a female. And I think you're going to see more of it, especially now that the UFC has hit national television. Uh, it's becoming more mainstream. Mixed martial arts is blowing up. Uh, uh, you know, Dana White, you know, obviously crushed that brand. I know it's getting bigger in Israel now. Uh, reality fighting, you know, such as Krav Maga uh, has, has blown up. And I think people with reality TV and with the Internet are going to expect more from their movies, and I think that's what this is going to represent. And, you know, to you guys, to the people who are listening, uh, uh, that production went out of their way to make sure that it does. So 
you know, hopefully, hopefully people enjoy. I mean, really, what you're going to see is this badass girl beating her way through a bunch of male celebrities. And to me, that's great. 